Mirror of the World is a program where we read a chapter of the Bible and then we pray for those who are sick. My name is Buki Adeosh. I am your regular host on the program. I trust today in the name of Jesus that the Lord is going to give us a word that is going to move us to another level in Jesus' name. Uh, we've been reading the book of Proverbs uh, so far. We've we are now on Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter eleven. I mean, amazing, amazing. Proverbs Proverbs chapter ten was awesome. I want to I want to encourage you. Please um go and listen to that video. Go on our YouTube channel and go and watch that video on Proverbs chapter eleven. Amazing and amazing revelation. The blessing of the Lord it makes rich. Uh, the Lord is going to give you a blessing that will open another door for you in the name of Jesus. You know, uh, I don't want to be tempted to go into one of the scriptures that uh, we read. You know, we, we looked at the story of uh, Mary and she said that now uh, all the people from this time onward, all the nations, all the people of the world, shall call me blessed because of what the lord did for her so i say i say i posted something i say the lord will do something for you that people who see you will say wow that is someone who is blessed of the lord and who is blessed by god that is going to be your story that is going to be your testimony in the name of jesus i just want to do a quick recap I want to remind us of what we said about the book of Proverbs, what we read in the chapter of the Proverbs, what will it do for us. Um, we said that uh, Proverbs will make those without education smart. You know, I emphasize uh, this a lot because a lot of people disqualify themselves because they do not have the educational at advantage. Uh, because they haven't got the opportunity to go to you know the top schools and they think that you know they cannot make something great out of their lives if you just go into the, and study the book of proverbs you will get some some good knowledge and some wisdom from it you know uh we look at proverb and we saw something about planning you say planning ahead will protect you can you imagine an understanding we got you so um we say keeping god's word in your heart will give you long life you know uh, amazing amazing things that the lord revealed unto, or revealed unto us from the book of proverbs so i want to encourage you to go and watch all the videos they are all available on our youtube channel uh heaven of glory uh today i'm trusting god that you will find something in the word of god you will locate yourself in the word of god uh there are two things i normally start with and that's the first thing that god told me while um, i was doing this program he said there are two important things he said the first thing is that um christianity is not a religion it is an experience so he asked me to tell you you must have an experience um the bible second thing the bible is not a storybook it is an experience when you read something in the bible when you find something in the bible that fits into your situation you are supposed to experience it you are supposed to stay with that word until you see the manifestation of that word in your life you are supposed to declare it you are supposed to uh, uh, to make it known to people announce to people say look I found this scripture about me and this day is this word fulfilled in your eyes. So let's trust God as we go into the book of Proverbs today. The Lord is going to show us something that he wants us to become in Jesus' name. So I want you to please uh, get your Bibles like I normally say that, um, you know, this is not another preaching session. 
It's a session where we get to read the word of the Lord together. I haven't been seeing your comments. So please, I want your comments at the bottom of this video. It's not another teaching or preaching session. I really want you to uh, read a chapter of the Bible. And if you are doing so, daily, that's fine. But follow me and then let's read this together. And whatever minister to you from that word, please post it at the bottom of this video. Now, let's read Proverbs chapter 11. I'm going to be reading from the easy to read version of the Bible. The Lord hates false scales, but he loves accurate weights. Proud and boastful people will be shamed, but wisdom stays with those who are modest and humble. Good people are guided by their honesty, but crooks who lie and cheat will ruin, them, ruin themselves. Money is worthless when you, when you face God's punishment. Wow. But living right will save you from death. Doing right makes life better for those who are good, but the wicked are destroyed by their own wicked ways. Doing right sets honest people free, but people who can't be trusted are trapped by their greed. When the wicked die, all their hopes are lost. Everything they thought they could do comes to nothing. Good people escape from trouble, but the wicked come along and are trapped by it. With their words, hypocrites can destroy their neighbors, but with what they know, good people can escape. When good people are successful, the whole city is happy, and they all shout with joy when evil people are destroyed. Blessings from the honest people living in a city will make it great, but the things evil people say can destroy it. Stupid people say bad things about their neighbors. Wise people know to be quiet. People who tell secrets about others cannot be trusted. Those who can be trusted keep quiet. A nation without wise leaders will fall. Many good advisor, advisors make a nation safe. You will be sorry if you promise to pay a stranger's debt. Refuse to make such promises and you will be safe. A kind and gentle woman gains respect, but violent men gain only wealth. People who are kind will be rewarded for their kindness, but cruel people will be, re re will be rewarded for their, with their trouble. The work of evil people is all lies, but those who do right will receive a good reward. People who do what is right are on their way to life, but those who always want to do wrong are on their way to death. The Lord hates those who love to do evil, but he is pleased with those who try to do right. The truth is, evil people will be punished and good people will be set free. A beautiful woman without good sense is like a gold ring in a pig's nose. What good people want, want brings more good. What evil people want bring more trouble. Some people give freely and gain more. Others refuse to give and end up with less. Give freely and you will profit. Help others and you will gain more for yourself. People curse a greedy man who refuses to sell his grain, but they bless a man who sells his grain to feed others. People are pleased with those who try to do good. Those who look for trouble will find it. Those who trust in their riches will fall like dead leaves, but good people will blossom. Those who cause trouble for their families will inherit nothing but the wind. A foolish person will end up as a servant to one who is wise. What good people produce is like life-giving tree. Those who are wise give new life to others. If good people are rewarded here on earth, they, then surely those who do evil will also get what they deserve. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I've started doing something. Um, I've started doing what I call, I've started doing what I call uh, golden words or words on the marble, you know. It's like more or less like a, a, a quote, you know, in all these wonderful and lovely quotes uh, that we see from people. And um, if we can just start, you can help me if you're watching this video for the first time or you've been watching it. If you can start quoting, you know, some of the things we find in the, we find in the book of Proverbs, you know, that would be awesome. And I would really appreciate that as a matter of fact as i was doing this program you know i have a kenneth Hagin 
um, Bible, uh, sorry, Kenneth Copeland Bible, you know, complete Bible, 50 years anniversary with Kenneth Copeland's, you know, personal study notes that I want to give out. So I'm going to be watching and, and um, I'm going to be watching and going to see who is going to post more quotes. So the rule of the game is that you post some things that really minister to you and then you share the video and then you post it under this video and then you share it and then we're going to see who is going to go home with that uh, Kenneth Copeland um, Bible. Um, I mean, the, the, the retail price, yeah, sorry, the retail price is about uh, 45 pounds, but we are going to be giving it out free just to encourage someone to read the Bible. So I, I, I saw some quotes there that I want to start with. Uh, it says that um, the Lord hates, that's in verse 1, this is from another Bible translation, the Lord hates cheating and delight in honesty. So if you want to live long, I say stop cheating if you want to live long. long um, if you want to live long, <laughs> stop cheating on your wife. <laughs> stop cheating on your wife. Yes, uh, even though she has not been able to catch you, the Lord knows everything. If you want to live long, stop cheating on your wife. Stop cheating on your husband. Praise the Lord. Now, I love this. A foolish person will end up as a servant to the one who is wise. That's a good quote. A foolish person, uh, please I apologize for the technology, I think. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be putting this on PowerPoint later on. A foolish person will end up as a servant to one who is wife. That's, that's a good one. Uh, so, um, <laughs> if all you've been all your career is for you to be serving people and you have not had the opportunity of even leading a team, either in your place of work or outside your place of work, you're just a lone ranger, I think you need more wisdom. You need, uh, because, you know, we, we read in the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 21. I, I mean, I love that scripture. Uh, a lot of focus in Proverbs 10, 22. But Proverbs 10, 21 said, The mouth of a righteous man will feed and guide many people. Uh, so with the words that the Lord has put in your mouth, you can feed and guide many people. I mean, if, if the, the woman by the well... That, that met with Jesus, a prostitute could go to the whole, to, to the town and call all the men, all the men, all our customers, they, everyone, they followed her. Okay, you can do better, praise the Lord. Now, now this is a word of wisdom for someone. Now, okay, you know some people who come around and tell you secrets about other people. I just want you to know that the same way they are telling you secret about other people they will go on and tell your secret to other people okay that's the words of wisdom so next time you have a friend and say oh do you know what happened and uh, let me let me share a secret with you you know once they have shared somebody's secret with you that is to tell you that whatever they hear or get from you they're going to tell somebody else so be careful uh the book of proverbs said those who can be trusted keep quiet Mm -hmm. um, uh, as a pastor, sometimes uh, some people tell me some things and then, you know, they will see my wife and I will say, oh, uh, didn't your husband tell you this? No, if you, if you tell me something um, and you want my wife to know, you tell me. If you don't tell me, I'm not going to tell her. You know, I, I, I learned that from my, from my man of God, Reverend Elikim. You, know, you tell him something, he's not going to tell anyone. So that's the way it is. So. Uh, because uh, people who can be trusted, they keep quiet. If you want me to share it, I mean, sometimes I will ask you, do you want me to share this? You know, so uh, there must, that confidence must be there. So I uh, praise the Lord. Now, let's go to what we want to talk about today. I've just got only one thing. I'm trying to keep to time. So I do pray that I hope I'm able to do it today. Um, so uh, he who wins soul is wise. Um, the Bible says that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Proverbs chapter 11. Uh, and uh, he that wins soul is wise. So we need to become more passionate about winning soul uh, into the kingdom of God. And I want us to see some scriptures that demonstrate why this is important. And I pray that as we go through these scriptures today, the Holy Spirit 
we show you one or two things. Now, the first thing is in John chapter 3, verse 18. Um, uh, Jesus said, He who believes is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already. You know, has already been convicted and has already received his sentence. You know, because he has not believed in the name of the Son of God. Now, I want you to listen to this. People are not condemned because they see they sin. Uh, people are not going to hell because of their sin. People are going to hell because they refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. You know, that doesn't make sense. You know, <laughs> most of the things of God doesn't make sense. And this is what I say to people. Um, you know, um, in the new covenant, you know, is God doing everything? Everything starts and finish with him. Our part is just to believe. The only work that is required of us to do to work the work of the kingdom of God is to believe. You know, uh, people say, oh, just to believe, isn't that too simple? I tell you, it is difficult to believe because uh, if it is simple to believe, all people will be saved. You know, have you, have you met an atheist before? And, and they're going to tell you all the reasons in, <laughs> reasons in the world why they think there is no God. Anyway, let's leave that. So what I want to say is we sympathize with people who have incurable diseases. Uh, why, why? Somebody may say, why am I making this comparison? Jesus said, those who don't believe, they are condemned already. So they are condemned to damnation. They are condemned to eternal destruction. So when we see people who are alive, who, who's got incurable uh, diseases, you know, we sympathize with them. But we don't sympathize with unbelievers. You know, there are loads of people who are not safe around us and we know their end. You know, we, we know how they are going to end if the scripture is true, which I believe it is. And you and I, I'm talking to my fellow brothers and sisters today, our fellow believers. You and I know that the scripture is true. So if you believe and you know that the scripture is true, is, is, is true indeed, then we need to sympathize with people who are not saved because you know their end. Um, you know, you know, I, I don't do it. Uh, people who write things like rest in peace after people passed on. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't believe in things like that because, you know, actually, if the prayer that we said after the person is dead is dead, um, is of significant, then it means that people can do whatever they do, they want to do, and then, you know, when they die, we can pray for them so that God will have mercy on them. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is dead, and after death, the next thing is judgment. There is no opportunity for repentance again. The only thing that we make that person repent is if you could pray for the person, <laughs> to rise from the dead and come back and then accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Everybody will have a chance. That's why we have an important task at our hands. So all I'm saying today is that the same way we sympathize with people who have cancer, you know, all the incurable diseases, HIV and AIDS, you know, all those diseases, we ought to sympathize with people who are not believers. You know, some of us go to the extent of, especially when we, our loved one, uh, especially when our loved one, you know, they're about to pass on, uh, they are at the, you know, they are the terminal stage. Uh, some people gather Christians together. We do prayer and fasting. We do all sorts of things for God to heal them. But how many times have we actually set in motion, you know, a prayer chain to get members of our family saved? You know, um, uh, if, if your loved one is a Christian and they passed on, they've passed on to glory. I know it's painful and it is indeed really painful. But the truth of the matter is that if we have the opportunity to see them where they are and they have the opportunity to talk to us, as much as we do love them, they're going to say, hey, guys. Thank you very much. I don't want to come into that sinful world again. I've had enough. Okay. Here is good. Here is beautiful. And that's where it is. So it's important for us to sympathize, you know, or to empathize or to have pity, you know, on people who are not saved. And let, let's have a new passion to win soul. A new passion to win soul, not just to bring people to our church. 
but a passion to just draw the seed of the word of God, you know, share a track, share a flyer. By the way, if you are looking for opportunity of doing evangelism, we've printed loads of flyers. You know, if you if you text us or email us, you see address at the end of the program, we can send some to you. Now, the second reason is um, it, it, the reason why he who wins soul is wise is that uh, before Christ died, he told us to bear fruit. He said we must. John chapter 15, 16. If you love Jesus, I want you to seriously think about this scripture. Thank God um, I'm, not your, I'm not your pastor. Um, and and this, is, this is the words of Jesus. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have appointed you. I have planted you. You know, that's the subject for another day. You cannot say you are a Christian and not have a church. God will plant you in a place. So um, if, if you left a church because of what they did to you, I tell you something, you're going to go to another one. You're going to find the same thing. And, and it's not okay for you to be attending two churches. No. Uh, have, you, have, you, have you ever seen a plant, you know, a plant that is planted in two places? Uh, you, you, you can, have you seen a palm tree? You know, one is planted in Manchester, you know, if you're in UK, and then the other one is planted in, you know, Sheffield. No, you will never find anything like that. So I really don't understand some of the things, things we believe in, in the body of Christ anyway. So Jesus planted you wherever you are to bear fruit, and he wants your fruit to continue. So um, we said that he said before he died, uh, that uh, um, he came to save the world, and he who believes on him, they are saved. But they who, uh, but those who don't believe in him, they are condemned already. Secondly, he said he called you and I to bear fruit. Thirdly, on the cross, guess what happened? What was he doing? Don't I probably think that on the cross of Calvary, you know, when I saw this scripture, it was really amazing. You probably think on the cross of Calvary, all Jesus was doing was praying, Oh, Father, Lord, heal them. No, he did all the healings and all the miracles before he went to the cross. There was only one thing that he did on the cross. God was waiting for that opportunity on the cross. And what did God do? God was in Jesus Christ reconciling men to himself. And there and then he gave all of us the ministry of reconciliation. So you can find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. He said it was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with him, with himself, not counting up or holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them in Jesus Christ. And he committed to us the message of reconciliation so uh, let me tell let me tell you something usher in the church let me tell you mr counselor um uh, mrs alternos mrs amor god Biera, or whatever you do protocol whatever you do in the church that is not the real service the real ministry the real work that god has given everyone is to reconcile men to himself we are supposed to go and win soul. That's what Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 say. He who wins soul is wise. He who wins soul is wise. And finally, before Jesus left, after his resurrection, he gave the commandment, commandment Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. He said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 16, 15. You know, uh, your work is not just to, uh, to invite them to church. Your work is not just to preach the gospel. So when you win soul, encourage them to go and join a church. Uh, just like we do on this program. Uh, that's around them. Take their number if they will allow you. And then you can follow, follow up with them. You can encourage them. There's a lot of online programs, you know, discipleship programs. You can invite them to be part of the Bible study. You can ask them to who come to this, who come on, on to this program and learn how to read the Bible. You know, those are the, those are various opportunities that are available unto us. And he says that signs will follow those who believe. I pray that as you obey God and as you begin to make disciples, as you begin to preach, signs will follow the people that you preach unto in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to pray for those who are sick. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we thank you because you came so that we may have life and have it in abundance. Lord, I thank you because according to your word in Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 to 17, you healed every single person that was brought to you so that you might prove to people, you might demonstrate, you might made, make clear the meaning of what Isaiah the prophet wrote about you, that you took away our diseases and carry away our sicknesses. I ask you to make whole every single person watching today in Jesus' name. I declare that Jesus Christ of Nazareth made you whole. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name and begin to do what you couldn't do before. I command that temperature to go down right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I command that temperature to go down right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you for that miracle and I give you praise in Jesus' name. You can get a thermometer. I, I, saw, I saw something that looks like a thermometer as I was praying. Uh, so get a thermometer or get a nose or just put your and see. You, you will see a change in Jesus' name. Now, before I go, I want to give somebody the opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Like I said, um, you know, earlier on, he who does not believe is condemned already. So people are not going to hell because they sin. They are going to hell because they refuse to say yes to Jesus. So I want you to please, I be, I'm begging you, please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. God is not asking you to do anything. Just believe in the name of Jesus. It doesn't cost, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and then let the power that is at work, let the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, let that power begin to walk in you and begin to transform your life. If you want to say yes to Jesus, I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, if you say that prayer, I want you to do one more thing for us. You are going to see our address on the screen shortly. I want you to please um, um, send us a text, send us a message, and um, we will get back to you and, um, and send some materials to you that is going to help you grow spiritually. Uh, if you've got any question uh, at all or you need any support, uh, material support, financial support of any kind, please do get in touch with us and we are going to uh, support you as much as God help us to do so. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put it together, spirit, soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he would do it. Thank you so much uh, for watching this program. If this has been a blessing to you, I want you to please go ahead and share with someone. Don't forget, he who wins win soul is wise. Until I come your way at uh, same time tomorrow, 10 p.m. UK time. God bless you and bye.